Mr. Skeezy, yeah, he contacted me, right? And, um... <laughs> Tom, Tom Carhill bloke, yeah? I, like, I've, only seen, I've only seen his videos online, and obviously I've seen the backwards and forwards where he seems to be putting the boot in. And, um... <clears throat> the last thing that I got off of him, he was talking about, yeah, but it, uh, he's going like they're, they're all Jews or something, and why, why are they ashamed of it? Does it matter? Does it matter? Yeah, but what's the, I don't, what I don't understand. What I, don't understand. <laughs> I don't understand what the fuck that's got to do with it anyway. That's not. That's, uh, yeah, no, he's, <laughs> he's a, I know, he's a, he's a cunt. But, he, you know what I mean? He, um, I get this message and that on, on Twitter, so I thought, all right, I'll fucking, I'll have a look. You know what I mean? I'm entitled to find out what people, people are saying and that. And um, personally, I don't I don't think it was him because at the end of it, it, it the bloke's gone about, yeah, I'm gonna, I've got to switch accounts. I'm going to go back to my other one and talk about the Tom Carhill, the one with the the zero in his name rather than the O, which I think yeah. is the one. But then, to be honest with you, mate, who the fuck is he anyway? Because he's just someone on the outside that's just being seen to be putting the boot in. You know, I, I don't really understand. I don't really understand. But who's he well, I don't understand. And he's saying to me, right, I'll tell you what, tell you what he's... He doesn't well, he's... He's in Thailand, I don't know, isn't he? Why is he all the way in Thailand doing it? I, I, um, I'm out there. You know my story, anyway. Yeah, 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 no, I've watched it all. Yeah, yeah, the whole cold thing. Yeah, and the, he, uh, the he, um, he, he got a, he got a punch on Twitter about something that he said. Yeah. And
Channel 4 Dispatches correspondent Chris Plumley recently asked my barrister, Michael Wolkai in QC, on the context, on the subject of police corruption in my case, was this just a matter of a few bad apples spoiling the barrel? The misconduct of the police in their investigation, in their interviewing, in their gathering of evidence and in their performance at trial was no surprise to me. Funnily enough, it was a surprise to Ian. And it's no surprise to me because unlike the public who may hear the headline case now and again, they don't see the day-to-day -day performance of police officers. Of course I'm willing to concede that there is the occasional good apple in the barrel. But what Ian saw was a shock to him and maybe a shock to many people. shit what people are saying here and honestly mate I'm just I'm not fucking I don't care I just want to sort my own life out get these cameras get the fucking rest of the ninjas and do a bit of filming and editing because it's easier than being in the music business and all this fucking other shit it's doing my nutting it's really doing my nutting mate you know what I mean I just want a quiet easy life Richard Mellick. Yes. Ted Heath. Yes. Confirmed. Okay. Yes means Andrew had sex with them. Confirmed means other victims have come forward and has been confirmed by NAPIC. When we sat down and we done the cabin interview and the names that you ruled off, yeah, on the start of it, what gave it away was that he told you to say Richard Mallet. Yeah. Right? And and that tells me that if Bill is getting you to say Richard Mallet's name, right, that means that he knows Richard Mallet and Richard Mallet was supposed to be representing me in the phone hacking case, the same solicitor that has been covering up my own files from when he represented me back in 2002, yeah? When the News of the World set me up. And he could have proved in 2002 that they tapped my phone. Now he comes to me in 2012 saying, oh, I think you've got a really good case here. As I said, I thought you was treated badly. This is going to be millions. What? So I give him the authority to go into the police. And unbeknown to me, I've given him the authority to go in there and start doctoring things up so that... Rupert Murdoch and the News News International don't have to face what I've got. Right, this is what this is all about. Yeah. And and I had suspicions with his mate Ian Puddick because Ian Puddick, I was round Bills one day and he introduced me to Ian Puddick on the phone and Ian Puddick finished the conversation with this. 
Oh, by the way, if you want any uh, telephone numbers and addresses and that, you know, I can I can get all that. And I just went, oh, oh, oh all right, nice one, Ian. Cheers, mate. Cheers. And left it at that. But what he done was he gave himself away, Andrew, because I thought I could think of nothing more that the newspapers would love right now would be to get me stalking and hacking someone and getting phone numbers and addresses while I'm accusing them of it. Do you see what I'm saying? What more perfect tool, weapon could they have against me? I'm not corrupt. I can't be bought. Big Brother offered me 500 grand so I could go in and splurt about what you told me. Did I go? No, I didn't. I told them to fucking shove their TV show up their fucking arse. 